Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my Let's Make an Open World RPG in the Dawnhaven series. Um, in this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make reusable NPCs um, for your town. Um, let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. Alright. So, as you can see, any NPC named Citizen, those are my reusable NPCs. When you talk to them, they say um, a random greeting. Oh, what do we have here? And then you could ask for advice. It's dangerous to travel unarmed. Yes. You go, hey, what's up? World in full, Castle Ravenfell is where members of the Covenant live. I wish I can see the inside just once. So, um... Let's see if we can find other ones. Here's another one. It says, howdy. Word advice. Keep your eye open for books that will boost your skills. Um, and then we also have the named NPCs, um, which we'll get into later. But as you can see, we have citizens all over the place. Let me go ahead and jump to a different town. Uh, that was not the button I was trying to press. For some reason, I've been pressing F12 every time I want to press F9, and I don't know why. I have to stop that. Because I legit got my whole um, game that I was playing wiped because I haven't saved and I went back to the menu. Teleport. Let's go to High Fire. I think High Fire is going to be my favorite town once... I populated with more um, so as you can see citizen and the best thing about this is it's reusable and you know I'll show you exactly what I mean by that citizen citizen and they're all different graphics citizen and then if I leave and come back they're still gonna be the same people um, they've obviously spawned in different locations now, once a day, I have it set to every day, um, they they respawn and they change to a different graphic. Now, it might end up being the same or you might end up seeing the same NPCs, but um, their graphics will have changed. Like, for example, these two are the same, but it's okay because, again, um, they're <laughs> on a template and they spawn in randomly. Um, and the more NPCs you have in that um, pool, the less of a random, um, the, the less of a chance that you run into the same NPC. So think about how GTA has their NPCs where when you're walking down the street, sometimes you might run into the same looking people. Um, so kind of like that. So let me show you exactly how this works. Um, now, all those NPCs, as you can see, actually, it's a, it's a whole bunch of um, systems that I put together. Um, to make this custom effect and I'll you know list that for you guys so these are literally the events so as you can see they're just named um, random citizen is a clone um, and it goes to a random region one um, and then it's a clone of event 120 so the first script um, that you're going to need if you want if you want to accomplish the same thing is let me go ahead and find this you're gonna need clone events by shaz so this allows you to put um you could also use a spawn event um if you want um but for now i think i'm gonna use the this but if you don't want to clutter the actual um map with events you could have them spawn in using the common event um if i ever change it up to that um i'll let you guys know but for now this is how i have it set up so first you're gonna need this um event cloner which clones events from a different map um and that way you could just make blank templates and then every time you need to change up um the actual event you don't have to go find all the um you don't have to go find all the copies of the event and all your maps you could just go to the original event change it up and everything will sync up to the other events um, so that's the first thing you're going to need. Um, I'm not really going to go into how to configure it, but pretty much all you need to know is all I have to do is, um, to use this, 
I have to put this tag in one of these events and then it will just um so for example I put clone 120 it will clone event 120 from the map that I assigned which is 49 okay so let me go to 49 so this is where all the clones are coming from they're all coming from this one event right here event 120 now the other script you're going to need actually one second one second you're gonna need this little snippet right here um that's not really uh you could find it on the forums um is a snippet that um falcao i think is how you pronounce it made for me a long time ago uh let me go ahead and find that well depending on what type of game you're making you might not actually need it um but if you if you want the enemies i mean not the enemies if you want the npcs to spawn in and be enemies you will kind of have to do this um and depending on if you want them to be different types of enemies and i'll show you exactly why i used it but let me go find it per name oh it's not just really just pearl it, it works with anything so all this pretty much does is it it changes the event name in game so this name right here citizen enemy 64 i can change that in game um let me make sure that's all the scripts that i used that's one more page conditions yeah um the other script that i use let me go ahead and find it page conditions i think that's by let me go ahead and find it yeah page conditions by hime um so this pretty much allows you to have a more control over your conditions which are these right here so it allows you to um pretty much make your own custom conditions and you call them by having a comment that says page condition and then right here you put that condition um anything below that first condition branch that you do um will just work as regular so this condition branch just works regularly um and then this one is the only thing that allows this to work all right so now that um i've gotten through all the requirements let me one more time show you guys exactly what the script is i mean what the system is doing then i'll <clears throat> go back in detail oops i am in the wrong place players start right there all right as you can see it's changed uh don't worry about this guy yeah don't worry about that guy so um every time you come in obviously it will be a different event so to make this um Depending on the type, depending on what you need this for or what what type of game you're making. So let's say, for example, you're making a regular game and you don't have a, you, you're not using the per ABS. You're going to have a lot less event pages than I do. And I'm going to tell you why. So the first event page is pretty much um, what sets up the whole system, right? So the first thing it does is it sets the npc max to 30 and the reason being is because i have 30 npcs in this in the system so if i had 60 then the npc max will be 60 you would manually change it to whatever number of npcs you have um, and then npc rand will pretty much make a random number will take a random number from the max um numbers that you have so let's say for example my max number is 30 NPC rand will just be equal from a random number between 0 to 29. Keep in mind it starts counting from 0 and not 1. 
So, um, so for example, it could be 2, 3, 4, 29, 24, um, but, you know, so that's what that's doing. And then the second part is it pretty much just checks, hey, what map are you on, right? And keep in mind, since this is only for town maps, um, that's all I'm checking for here. So the first one checks, hey, are you in um, Hollow Tip? If you're not there, are you in Longport? If you're not there, are you in um, uh, Snowhaven and then so forth, right? If you're in Hollow Port, I mean, if you're in Hollow, um, Hollow Tip, Hollow's Tip, then um, all it would do is it will change the name of the event into Enemy 22. So it will get rid of the citizen and it will just change it to Enemy 22. The reason being is depending on what town you are in, when you attack the enemy, um, your bounty goes up. So those are different enemies. So when you're in Hollow Tip, when you hit a Hollow Tip citizen, your um, the bounty for Hollow Tip will go up. And then if you're in a different, so that's why the name of the enemies change. Um, and let me just kind of show you what that looks like. So if I go to enemy. Now, they're all obviously the same enemies just copied over. Um, Hollow Tip Civilian um, and it pretty much here. When you kill this enemy, it turns on this, which is um, a, a switch specific for um, Hollow Tip. So that's why I had to do that. Now, if um, you only needed this for one town, obviously you wouldn't have to do this. Um, you would just... Um, change you know you would just only have it change one of them right now that's the second part now the third and last the main important part right it's a custom uh well not custom but it's a little script called that i um i made so depending on what num value mpc rand evaluates to so let's say for example it pulls out five from the random number that it's picking right all this will do is it will turn self switch. Um, it will turn on a custom self switch. If you guys didn't know, um, the game limits you if you're using a system to force um, self switches. But technically, you could have an infinite amount of self switches if you um, use this script call right here. Um, and that's um, game self switches. Uh, let me actually get rid of this part. Right. So it's game self switches right here. You would put the map. So if the event is on map two, you will put two here and then you put the, um, the event ID and then you put on, um, you would then add in what self switch you want. So if you want Z, you can make self switch Z now doing it this way. Now, this is the kicker. Doing it this way, I'm not limited to naming my self switches um, A, B, C, or a number. I could name them. Uh, I could make them into a full string. So I could name them whatever I want to, right? So, using that same concept, um, let me explain what this part does. So, at map pretty much just pulls in whatever map that the player is on. So, if you're on map 10, then the, the map ID will be 10. So this will get changed into 10. At event ID just pulls in whatever event this um, this uh, script is called from. So if it's called from event 20, then this right here will be 20. So let's say this is map 5. You're on map 5. And let's say you're on map 5 and it's event 10, 20. Then this will get changed to 5. This will get changed to 20. Now, this is the interesting part. Since I can name my invent, uh, my switches anything, um, there's a little trick in Ruby that lets you put um, variables into strings, right? So all I did was um, I made, so let me erase everything else and just leave it to this. So pretty much all I did was I said, hey, I want my, um, I want my variable names my self switches name to be look right and then this whole part just says 
whatever NPC ran is equal to. So if NPC ran generated a number, a random number, and let's say it was six, right? Then the variable, I mean, the self switch that will get turned on will be looks six, um, look six. If it's seven, then it will be look seven. If it's 10, then it will be look 10. So let's say you had 50 NPCs that you could pull in from. And then let's say it generates um, the number 37. Then it will, this will turn on um, looks 37. So let me cancel that so it doesn't save. And this pretty much, um, you don't really need it. Um, so I'm not even going to explain that. But it just saves um, the position of the event. So now these are my regular events. So this part is where you would do whatever you would um, that you would do for the event, right? So the first thing you obviously want to do is make the page condition and make it equal to um, look one, right? For your first look and then for your second look, which will be this one, you just keep increasing it. Um, This one is actually supposed to be look two. Make sure this change. Imagine if my numbering was off because of that one, and then I have to go back and change all the. Actually, I, I have an easy fix for that, actually. Because I could just tack on a number. Okay, yeah, all my, all my numbers are off. But pretty much every NPC you make, you just increase the number. And since my numbers are off, let me go ahead and uh, make this girl back into one. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, because I know I might not be explaining it the best, let me know. Maybe rewatch the video a couple of times. And then since there was 30 here, I'm going to go ahead and just change this guy to zero. Actually, that's what it, that's what he's supposed to be. He's actually the one. Okay, yeah, he's the one that was numbered off, not the girl, because it starts counting from zero to twenty nine, not one to thirty. So, um, the page conditions will say, oh yeah, this um, so the page condition will say, hey, if look is equals to zero, then this is the page that will come up, right? And then don't worry about the rest of this. Um, obviously, whatever you do for your own NPCs is what you would do here. I'm going to explain it to you guys. Um, now, this first part is the pickpocketing system that you could pickpocket um, any NPC in the game. I've already explained this to you guys. If you go back to one of my old videos, I explained to you exactly how this pickpocketing system works. Right? And then this is and also if you're in sneak mode, right? So if you're not in sneak mode, then you could talk to the NPC regular, right? NPC greetings is pretty much a common event um, where I have a whole bunch of um, random things that the NPC can say. So let me go ahead and pull that up. Common event. Scroll down here to NPC greetings. So I just, um, depending on how many greetings I have, I have a random number from one to that many. So the, um, I'm planning on adding more greetings, so that way I'm going to have like thousands of greetings, so maybe you will never run into like the same greeting once, I mean twice. Um, so it pretty much generates it, it says there's something random, hello every time, hey what can I help you with, and then NPC advice again, the same system, it just, it's random words. Um, <clears throat> so when you talk to them, um, it's random. Um, and then, um, all the enemies are passive. When you hit them, self switch B gets turned on. Keep in mind, I'm not using the regular conditions over here. So I have the first page condition and then I have my second page condition. So you could have multiple page conditions as long as you denote it first by having the comment page condition. So these won't, um, these won't affect the page condition, just this. And then... We go to the second one, and again, all you have to do each time is just increment this number to one, look one. Um, again, 
this is standard so i didn't change this part so all the npcs npcs are literally identical um but every time you talk to them they would say something different um again same thing now I kind of started changing it up where i just made all this um all the ones without the uh, without the battle and then afterwards i made the ones with self switch b on so i made I made the the first section without self switch B. So instead of alternating, uh, without self switch B, self switch B, I just did without 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 then with 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 with. Um. So if you go towards the ending of the page, all of these will be with self switch B on. Right. And if you go towards the beginning, that doesn't really affect it. Um. It, if you know how inventing works, it's the same thing. And then if you go over here, most of these will not have um, self switch. Actually, well, that's before I started changing it. But if you start looking at these ones, let me oh, go to these. I think it's like over here. That's a lot. Yeah, so it's so over here that I started changing it to where it's like that. So that's pretty much how it works. Um, I'm going to kind of briefly explain it again, right? So using those scripts that um, I showed you guys in the beginning, right? The first thing I did was I made, depending on how many NPCs you have, you have NPC uh, max here. Then you have another variable. Um, make sure that there, um, that it has that dollar sign. I forgot if it's a class variable or uh, whatever. But um, I have another variable, and it's a random number. It picks, it gets a random number. So if I had, yeah, it gets a random number based on whatever this number is equals to, right? So that's why NPC max is in there, and that's why this is equals to NPC max, right? Second part just changes the name of the event. This part is because I'm using the per ABS. If you're not using that, you don't have to do this part. You could just leave it how it is. Um, and... All it does is be based on what city you're in, it changes the name of the enemy. So these two cities, they share the same um, crime, so crime rate. That's why they're both the same enemy. This next two share the same crime. That's why they're both the same enemy and so forth. And then the most important part after that section is this section, which just turns on a self switch. Um, it just, um, this all says, um, turn on self switch that's on the map that I'm on, um, on the event that's calling this script. And then it just, this is the actual, um, self switch it turns on. And then it just pulls in that number that it, it randomly picked out from the first, um, section of the, of the event. Um, and then depending on what that, um, self switch, um, depending on what self switch gets turned on um obviously then the enemies will i mean the npcs will show up um now there's one more part to the to the script now if you leave it the way it is now every time you leave well once you start the game the npc once the npcs are set they will always be like that forever now i kind of want some vari variety so I made it so um, once a day that the system will reset the NPC will reset and give the NPCs um, a new chance to spawn. So it will always be different NPCs every day when you enter those towns. Um, so it's pretty much straightforward. Let me go down here to my code. Um, here it is right here. Reset NPC. So. Uh, pretty much this part just um, you put in the map ID right um, and all it's pretty much doing is it loads up the map and then it loads up the map uh, and then whatever map that you, you put in right here so let's say for example you put in map 2 um, it will pretty much um, load map 2 to this variable right here then this part just goes through every variable I mean event i'm sorry this part goes through every event that's on that map right and it does this to it 
And what this is, is pretty much um, it goes to countdown equals to MPC max if MPC equals nil or MPC max is not zero. So all that's doing is um, remember over here where MPC max is equals to 30, right? MPC max will always be equals to 30 um, unless I change it myself, of course. So that's where this that's being pulled in from. So countdown is equals to that MPC max. So that countdown is pretty much how many times it would do this, right? Um, and then the count times dot do. So that's exactly what I just explained to you. So let's say um, we have 30 is the max. That means this would run 30 times. And all it's pretty much doing is it's going through all the events on that map. And it's, and if self and if the self switch that's um if the self switch is on like one of those self switches that we made if one of them are on it will turn it off so that's all this does so when you run this it will go through all those uh, events on that map and it will turn off all the switches that we turned on to make those npcs come up so let's say this was the enemy it will pretty much turn this off which will then make this false and it will default back to this first um, event page which will then run this whole system again right and then what calls it if we go right here npc daily reset right so Actually, you no, know, this is for the enemies. My bad. If I scroll all the way up here to day and night, all NPC reset. So that's what resets it. And let me also show you what all NPC reset is. Um. Actually, I'm going to run into an error if I run this because I moved a couple of things around and I forgot to put this below here. All right. So all this pretty much is um, depending on how many maps you have in the game. So let's say you have 50 maps. Then this will literally um, go through all your maps and it will reset all the NPCs. Um, I could, um, you know, pick which map to reset, but it's easier to just go through every single map in the game and reset it. Um, and, and since it's only happening once a, um, a day, there's really no lag, um, you know, that happens at all. Um, so that's what gets called. Everything gets reset. Uh, once everything gets reset this runs again and one of these guys gets picked up again um and the last part is uh, i think that is the last part uh and then obviously however you get this event to the maps you want is up to you you could either spawn them in using the event spawner that i showed you guys in the last um episode or you could just do what i did with the clone and then just go through each of the maps Put the clones, uh, the gray, snow haven, put the clones. That way, you never have to really worry about them. They're all set up. Every time you come in, the whole system just manages itself. If you want more NPCs, you just add more clones. If you want less NPCs, you take um, off less clones. And then in the future, the more you get um, more tile sets or the more you create rent, um, generated um, NPCs, um, you could add them in later, so you could always have an um, expanding um, list of NPCs you could work with, and you don't have to go through all your um, events and you know reinvent um, them or add them into different um, to all those different events. You just know, hey, you come into this map, you change this one citizen, and all the citizens in the game gets changed for you. So let me just reset the game again. Um, can I just show you what's happening as you can see different reset one more time game. 
different. Oh, a hardware bandit spawned in. I love these guys because every time they spawn in, they always ask you for money. And it's like, I could kill them and just not have to pay, but I like paying them. They're poor. But anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Make sure to subscribe to my Patreon if you haven't, if you want to play the game right now. Um, also, give me feedback if you are already subscribed to my Patreon. Um, if you've been testing the game, join the Discord so you, we could talk about the game and what needs to be changed, what needs to be added. If you're a Patreon subscriber and you um, want to be in the game, just shoot me a DM in um, Discord and let me know. And I have to give a big shout out to my Patreons. I have a new member, Devin. Thank you very much for subscribing. Um, you don't know how much this means to me. I was literally um, dancing with joy yesterday. I appreciate you a lot. Um, but yeah, appreciate you. Uh, there's another guy that I want to. Let me just go to my Patreon. I don't know how to get to my guys, and I don't want to show your information by accident here. My two Patreons. How do I see them? Patreon expenses. Relationship manager. Benefits. No. Well, I have two Patreon subscribers. Thank you both. Um, in the next video, I will shout you got. I will shout you the other guy out. But I definitely appreciate you for supporting Dawn Haven. Um, yeah. Um, version zero point zero seven is coming out next week. Um, it's gonna have all the new features like the um new encounter system, the new NPC, so the world will live um look more livelier. Um, new enemy types that's being added in. You can now become a vampire. Uh, well, not you can always become a vampire, but I never actually added the enemies that can turn you into a vampire. So um, you could do that now. Werewolves, I'm still kind of trying to. They're in the game right now. You could turn into a werewolf. Well, you, you can't turn into a werewolf, but there's no way for you to actually turn into a werewolf because I haven't actually put in put it into the world yet. So I got to figure out how to do it. Uh, I, maybe I can make it like the vampires, where if you fight a werewolf, and yeah, I, I think I, I'm gonna do that. Um, I also added some weird beer. I mean, not weird beers, but I added some vampire beers and some vampire something else. But yeah, you could get turned into a vampire now. New ghosts, new enemies, new weapon types, more stuff coming on the way. Thank you guys for being supporters. If you're not a Patreon subscriber, thank you for being a YouTube subscriber. If you're not a YouTube subscriber, thank you for being a watcher. Thank you guys. I appreciate you and peace.